Hey guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to look at how you add and import users, additional users for a customer account. Um, to do that we start in the admin panel, we go start and up to the customer manager. Again we're going to search for our demo account Steve Jobs, click through on the customer ID, go along to the users tab and it's going to show us the default user for this customer so there's there's a, a few cool functions at this point you can log in as that user so let's say for example you want to log in and replicate a problem the customers having or you want to see what they're able to see um, you just click the login button and that takes you straight into that account without having to ask the customer for the username and password so that's nice um, you can create an order for the customer straight from this screen and also do a return as well the user rather. Um, but we want to add additional users. This video is about adding and importing additional users. So there's two ways we can do that. We can click on this button here to add a new user manually or we can import users. We're going to cover both scenarios in the video. So let's go ahead and add a new user. So this user is Darth Vader. One for all the Star Trek fans out there. Sorry, Star Wars. God. Um, email address, password. Um, it's already picked up that he's part of this company, so it's pre-populating the um, company name. It's then saying, okay, what billing and shipping address would you like this user to be defaulted into? So we would like the billing for this user to be California and the shipping to be Denver. Um, we'll add a telephone number for the account. Um, fax and sell what type of customer or what user type is this customer do you want them to pay by credit card or account well we'd like them to be paying by account and as he set up to receive the newsletter and as the account enabled say yes to both and save and boom that's a new user set up for that customer so if we go back to list all users we can now see there's two where there was one before. Uh, click through on the user we've just created and we can see that the billing is set to California and the shipping is picking up the address for Denver because that's what we asked the system to do. Okay, um, so there is another way to do that. If you've got tons of users uh, for a particular company then you can import those users again using the templates that we provide. So you do that by clicking on the import user template tab Again, use our downloadable import templates, don't use your own. Um, of course, I've, I have one pre-prepared, so I'm going to bring that up and we'll just have a look at some of the things in that template. It's this guy here. So working our way from left to right, we've got gender, M for male, F for female, name, some more distinguished guests within this user template. Luke and Anakin Skywalker. Then we've got date of birth. That's non-mandatory. I think we'll actually discontinue the use of that field because nobody is using it. So we'll probably end up taking that away, but it's not mandatory anyway. Uh, the company. So is this user part of the main company or are they part of a different company? So if it's the same company, then you want to just check how the company's been um, entered back on the main customer record. So it's test Apple company. So if you want them to be in the same company, then you keep that at test Apple call. Now the address description, at this point it's saying what address do you want to default this particular user into? And you need to add the address description field from the address section. Again, I know this is pretty complicated guys, but bear with me. So you, look, you go to the address tab, and if you want this new user that we're about to import to be defaulted into the Denver address, then you populate the import spreadsheet with the address description field, Denver address, and it will pull through everything else. Telfax and mobile for the user, email address, password. Do you want them to be able to receive the newsletter? Are they an administrator? If that's set to yes, then they have the big list of options when logged into their control panel on the front end. So they're an admin user, they get access to all the functionality of the software. If that's set to no, then they get a much more limited level of access and we call that a requester 
level access. And so within that access, they don't get to see things like reports and be able to add cost centers and departments and additional users. All of that functionality is hidden from them. Um, are they allowed to order? Yes or no. Are they allowed to access multiple departments or just the department that they are defaulted into? So if that's set to yes, they get access to everything. If that's set to no, then they just get the default against their user profile. Exactly the same for cost centers. If that's set to yes, they'll be able to select from all cost centers. If that's set to no, then they'll only be able to select the default cost center associated with their profile. Exactly the same for addresses. And the last thing we need to discuss here is customer type. So this is how do you want this user to pay for their orders. Customer type 2 is credit account and customer type 1 is credit card. So both of these guys are set up to pay by credit account. So again we go ahead and we save this. So file, save as, call it customer users. It's very important to save it as a .xls file or as it comes up in Excel, a 97-2003 workbook. Overwrite the file that's there. Go back to the list of users, click import, navigate to the file that we've just created, customers underscore users, and hit upload. Takes a few seconds, come back, and we've got two new users inserted. So we can now see there's four users there where there was only two before. So that's how you add users either individually or en masse. In the next video, or the next video that you should watch, is the user settings video. And in that video, I'm going to go into more detail about what you can do with each individual user and some of the controls that you can apply there. So I hope you enjoyed that, guys, and we'll see you again on the next video.